Let's discuss the reflection in plane mirrors. A plane mirror is essentially a smooth, flat surface. If you look at yourself in a mirror, you see an image of yourself and other things around you. But you don't see yourself as others see you. That's because there is a left and right reversal. If you were to lift up your right hand and wave to yourself, you'd see your left hand waving back at you. It's like this picture over here. If you were to range your thumb and your index middle finger in this pattern, you'd see this reversal that occurs in the image. There are several main properties that you should know about plane mirrors. So, in the reflection in the mirror, you'll find that the image is upright. So it doesn't flip upside down that you'll see later when we talk about curved mirrors. There's that reversal, that left-right reversal that occurs. Or as you see here, you're pointing your thumb inwards and it points back towards you. The image is the same size as you are. So the height of the object, your height, is the same as the image height that you see in the mirror. And lastly, the distance between you and the mirror, this distance here, we'll just call it the object distance, DO or S sub O, is the same thing as the distance between the image and the mirror, which I'll label D sub I for image distance. Let's discuss ray diagrams. Ray diagrams are helpful in showing image formation. It tells you something about the image, it tells you its uh, nature, for example, if it's real or virtual. It tells you something about the orientation, if it's upright, like it is here, or inverted. And it also tells you something about the size, whether it's smaller, larger, or the same size. If you look at the diagram down here on the left, you can see a chess piece that's in front of a mirror and your eyeball looking at the light ray. Let's talk about what's really happening here. The light, say, that's emanating from the bottom of this chess piece is leaving here at this particular path here, and it strikes the mirror, obeying the law of reflection, and reflects coming towards your eye. Now, your eye would be looking at this reflected beam, and it would be thinking that light is emanating from behind here along this dashed line. Notice, I didn't draw a solid line behind the mirror, and I've used dashed lines in here because the light is actually not going through the mirror. But your brain is thinking that this object appears here. So it doesn't think that the light is crooked. It thinks like it goes in a back in a straight line, forming an image over here. Now, this image, do you think this is a real image? or a virtual image. If you were to like put a piece of paper behind here, would you see the image form on the piece of paper? This is like behind the wall where the mirror is. No, you wouldn't see the image. This is a virtual image. Virtual images are basically images where you cannot capture the image on a screen. Like say a movie theater, you know the image that you get on the screen, that's real. But an image that's formed behind a flat mirror is actually virtual because it's not really there. You can't capture it on a screen. So a virtual image, well, the light rays don't actually pass through the mirror to the location where the image is forming. The main test is the image cannot be captured on a piece of paper or a film. And a real image, which is not shown here, but you'll see soon, is an image where the light rays do pass through and form an image at that location. And hence, the image can be placed on a piece of paper or a film. So, another important property about the images formed for flat mirrors is that they, this image is virtual. I should also mention one more point, that all the light rays that are coming from one particular place on this object, but maybe leave at different angles, like this one that I've just drawn. will strike the mirror and seem to originate from the same location where the image is formed. So you can see as I drawn out here, I've drawn this ray out here, strikes the mirror, and then this nice straight line so that if your eye was placed over here and it was looking at this beam of light, it would still be thinking that light was coming from behind over here. You'll notice also that I use dashed lines in here because the light 
doesn't really pass through the mirror, and so we have to use dashed lines because your brain would be looking at this light and interpreting it from coming from behind here. Really, the light's not going through the mirror, behind the mirror, so we use dashed lines there, and it's really originated from this location over here. This image is therefore virtual. Okay, take a look at the next section, which is on multiple images.